Alrighty, so I have a selection of different types of yarns, and I'm just going to show you um, about like how different types react to both like brushing and straightening. Depending on what kind you get, they will it will turn out quite different um, look wise, feel wise, how well they straighten and how well they like brush out and stuff. So basically I'm just like getting about um, about five inches of a strand, like that's how long I'm going to make them, but I actually uh, need like 10 inches because I tie it in the middle in a knot. So here's about 10 inches of this uh, gray yarn. So it doesn't really, you don't have to be that precise with it, but um, this is just a a sort of test to show you guys how yarn behaves differently based on everything. So I just cut it, tied a knot in the middle, and we have all of these different kinds. So some of these I do actually use in my wigs. I think I've used this one, I've used this one, this one. Those are the ones that I personally like. So let's brush these out to see what it looks like, how well it brushes and all that. Alright, so here we have all of them brushed out. As you might be able to see, they are a lot shorter than uh, five inches now. They're at the longest, well actually this one actually reached up to almost five inches, the very tip little sparkly bits right here, but for the most part it doesn't stretch further than like four inches. Um, and like, some of them look a lot shinier than others. Um, like this one especially. I actually think this one might be wool. Um, this one, I think, is uh, the Soft Red Heart brand. So it's not just the normal Red Heart, but it's like sp specifically supposed to be soft. And I actually like how it turned out. A lot. This one and the black one right here are both just normal red heart, which they're a lot coarser and I don't really like how the how wiry they look. Um, this right here, which I use in wigs also, is Karen Simply Soft. Uh, I don't have any just normal Karen, but that one actually works decently too, but I prefer the Simply Soft if I have to be honest. Um, and then the blue one is I love this yarn. So, um, some of these are actually not 100% acrylic, but I'm going to show you what they look like straightened, because, um, how they straighten is quite different based upon what kind of yarn it is, and also if it's 100% acrylic or not. Here we have them straightened. Um, most of them actually straightened pretty well. Uh, I still don't really like the feel of just the normal red hearts. They straighten okay, but also they're not very thick either. They're very like wiry and like loose compared to some of the others. The ones I use, which are this red one right here is actually kind of the thickest. It actually worked pretty well. And here's the other one I use, which this is the smooth red heart, soft red heart. And then this is the, uh, I love this yarn. So th all three of those, I actually use those in wigs. Um, this one, just a random kind of yarn. Not sure what kind it is, if it is acrylic or not, because it didn't straighten as much as I thought it would, but also it straightened decently, so um, this one also straightened decently, so I assume that it's 100% acrylic. The thing is with 100% acrylic, um, like acrylic is actually kind of like a, a thermoplastic of sorts, so whenever you straighten it, like put heat on it with a straightener, it should actually like, uh, 
like physically change it. But with um, fibers like like cotton, like it's not going to change with cotton or wool. And this one I kind of experienced that because it's still really wiry and didn't really flatten at all. Like compared to these, it's still very like wiry and not as flat as I'd like it to be. So make sure to check what kind of yarn you're buying and make sure it is 100% acrylic, especially if you want to straighten it because otherwise it's just not going to straighten as well as it should. So now we have our longer pieces slightly longer. I don't want to brush for the rest of my life, but we're gonna try and do the uh, longer, longer uh, strand method now. So let's see how each of these kind of yarn behave. Alrighty, so now I have them brushed. So far, um, some of them are working, some of them are not. This one, uh, I don't, this is one of the unknown just extra yarns I have. I honestly, it's starting to come apart and unravel. So that one didn't work as well as I wanted to. This one is just a red heart. It's actually holding up pretty well. Um, decent fluff. I still don't think it's that comfortable. This is also a red heart, which is like decent fluff, but eh. And what I'm trying to, what I'm kind of looking for is fluffy and not unraveling, but also like feels nice because <laughs> this kind of fluffed up, but also it just, it's like wool or something. So it doesn't feel that nice. This was okay. Not awesome, but worked all right. Um, this actually won't, this one worked the best which I think this one's like red heart, uh, the soft red heart kind. So I like the feel of it and it's decently fluffed. Um, this one actually, this is the one I'm going to be using for my uh, undyne wig. Um, it unravels a lot, unfortunately. It doesn't fluff up, but it'll probably still work. We'll see what it looks like when it's straightened. And then this is just another extra mystery yarn. Sort of fluffed. It's just okay. Alright, so now we got all of these straightened out. You can kind of see like how separated the strands look and stuff. Um, like these, they kind of look a bit separated, but they're still a little bit fluffy, which is good. This one actually turned out okay, even though they uh, the strands unraveled quite a lot. It still looks pretty unified and hair-like. Um, so maybe Karen Simply Soft isn't that bad for long stuff after all. Um, the only thing is like, like it seems like there could be possibility for it to rip apart if you brushed too hard whenever you're doing this. But, um, it's kind of interesting. So I guess now we can look at them together with the long and short. Alrighty, so here we have them. Uh, the <laughs> Karen Simply Soft actually did part of it ripped off, um, if you can see. So that one definitely fragile. Um, they all worked out decently. I think most of these are uh, mostly acrylic. I think the only one that isn't is this one, which I think it's either, I still think it's either uh, cotton or wool, but it's probably wool. It's very coarse. Um, but yeah, the rest of these worked okay, but it just kind of depends on your, what you're going for, how thick you're wanting the thing to be, how fluffy, because this is a lot less fluffy, but it's also, it looks okay, but it might just might not be what you're going for. So uh, just try out your, like test your yarn to see if it's what you want. And yep. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate how I sew the wefts into a wig. I don't always do a uh, wig where I'll do like parts of it, but if you want to like, if you have pins in a wig head, 
Um, I actually really like pinning in the, the wefts and seeing how they'll actually look. Um, and if I'm happy with it, then I'll keep it in. I have a uh, mesh under here that I'm going to be sewing the, the wefts in to. So yeah, um, basically I just have a knot at the end of my um, thread. And what I'm going to be doing is I'll just... I have mesh. It's black mesh, so it's kind of hard to see. But I'm all I'm basically doing is... Uh, let's see here. If I can zoom in a little. I am getting my needle into that mesh. And right back out. So now I have that in there. And I'm just going to put it in. Putting it through the thread. So I'm like putting it through the end in between the pieces. And it, it's now a knot. So that's in. The piece of thread is in. So now the end is just connected to the, the mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pierce one of the knots of the wefts. And it's this one with the, the green pin on it. I'm just getting the knot that's holding that one in and piercing through it. And I just pull through with this thread. Normally I'd be using black thread since I'm using a black mesh cap um, or whatever. But uh, white is helps you guys see better since it's on a black um, mesh and on black uh, like head thing. And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go straight through the mesh again. I'm just gonna connect it and go on to the next uh, the next knot, which is the one with the white pin in it. And I just pull it through. And then I go through the mesh. And sometimes I'll even do it twice on one uh, knot. Just because I feel like it. I like security. <laughs> I like secure knots. And you just keep going until you either want to stop or run out of thread or you finish and I'm going with it for that one with the uh, the pink the pink pin in it and once you uh, finish it if you're using pins you can just take the pin out I'm actually planning on whenever I actually do the hairline for this wig, I'm going to see if I can find a color of thread that is really similar to this uh, blue. And I'm going to do really small, um, really small wefts, like little strands on the hairline so you don't, like it blends into the hairline well. But yeah, that's basically that. Just in and out sewing. Hope this was helpful. Another thing I want to show you guys is the new um, system I have for making strands and wefts. Basically, I am no longer using a separate string to tie them on, and I'm not really cutting them. Like, I'm not cutting separate pieces. I'm making wefts. I like to do batches of like five, but you could do as many as you want. Heck, you could keep going for hundreds and just not stop. And then when you're done, cut them to the size you want. But I'm just going to show you how I'm doing this. 
So let's just say we want um, about this long that I already have made. Let's see how long that is. About that long. So I'll do this. I'm just going to make a knot, okay? Just make a knot where that is. Great. So that's a little that's close to that size. You brush it out, it might be a little shorter, a little longer. But um, what we're going to do, now that we have this with a little knot in it, we're just going to take this and like sort of measure against that. I usually do it a little bit longer just because whenever what we're going to do it's going to take up a little bit of the room. So now we have this. We still have this knot right here. What we're going to do is we're going to grab it and literally just circle it around and pull it through and make another knot right beside the knot we just made. Be careful not to like uh, do it over the other one. But you just do it right next to it and be careful when you're pulling it tighter. You just want it to be right next to it. It's close as possible but still with a little bit of room. So now we have this and that which is great. And we're just going to repeat that now. We're going to pull down, make a little loop, go back up, and then up here we're going to tie it. Tie it in a knot, do a little circle, pull it through, and now we have another knot right beside the one we just made. And we'll uh, pull it and tighten it a little bit. Have like a little bit of distance. It takes some work to make it so it's only a little bit of distance. Whenever I first started this, um, it was really easy to make it like really far away from the other one, wefts or the other strand. So just do this. Example of a further away one would just be eh, if you like pull it kind of wrong and pull it too tight too fast sometimes it can just get a little bit further and I it's okay if that happens it's just since I'm using just this yarn to make the wefts it's going to be like I'm trying to save as much yarn as possible so I'm just gonna keep keep going and your lengths will change if you aren't careful about how uh, close each knot is to the other one. Like that's the thing, like um, if you get it close it's going to be closer to what you measured out, but if you get it further away it's going to be shorter than what you measured out. See this one's shorter than what I had tried to do which was more close to this, and this one's closer to what it was supposed to be because I had it so close to this knot right here. So that's basically the thing. You make a template um, strand, I'm doing a knot, and then you just kind of keep going making more knots. And like I said, I like uh, strands that are usually around five long just because it's easier for me to brush out groups in five. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this, make sure it's tight on both of these strands. I'm just going to cut that piece that's holding it together. And so now we have this strand right here. And I've, you should have noticed this. Each of the bottom parts of this, they're connected there it's it's a loop so what we're going to do now is we're just gonna cut loops trying to get it in the middle of each loop so now we have a weft small weft and you can do this you can make really long wefts too 
but this is what we have. And I, all I had to do was tie it and cut it, and now I have a weft. So now that's taking out, tying it on a separate piece and making knots. Like you don't have to um, cut everything at once. Okay, so the old thing was literally just wrapping the yarn around your hand, cutting at the top, and then like each strand you would have to tie a knot in the middle of the strand. But you don't have to do that anymore. Or at least I'm not doing that anymore because th this goes a lot faster and it saves yarn and time and I just, I like it. Another thing I think you guys would be interested in are long wefts, um, long strands. Now the technique for this is pretty different from the technique to do short. Very, very different. Um, it can still look nice too, but it will also look different. Um, I have not straightened this yet, but we'll see. We'll just see how it looks straightened in a second. All right, so this is a piece straightened. I only like to lightly straighten these. I don't like to do it too much, but um, here is the straightened piece, and here is the non-straightened non here. So personally, I like to only, yeah, straighten it just a tad bit. Um, the part that's important to really straighten is the bottom parts, just because that's where it's that's where it's hair-like and it looks basically like it, the the short part. The only thing is um, you can only do like a few inches. You don't want to go four inches or more. You have to keep it short because otherwise it'll just unravel and shed a lot. So, I'm going to show you how to make this possible. Yep, we're gonna do this. So let's get one of these for reference, and I'll start. I'm going to do this the same, the new technique um, I have for making the webs, but brushing it out is gonna be way different. So, yeah. Alright, so I'm figuring out how long I want it to be, it should probably be around that length. Alright, so now we got this, going to tie a knot. Alright, so now we've got a knot in this, and I'm just gonna pull it down, get it the size that it needs to be, then bring it back, and make a knot up at the top. Pulling it through, making sure to get a knot close to the other knot. So we have that. Have a weft started. And I'm just going to do a group of five because I like groups of five for the long ones too. Have three. Need two more.
One thing that can be hard is losing sight of where exactly your yarn is and where your um, like template ones are, or the ones you've already done are. Um, just kind of takes practice, I guess, to get used to the whole thing. And then you'll kind of be able to muscle memory, like know which ones are which. All right, so we've got about five. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to cut the end of this. And we have this weft. And we have the ends we need to cut. So I'm gonna pull it sort of tight towards the end and then cut the ends. It's okay if they aren't all the same length. Doesn't really matter all that much. Um, so we have this right here. It's all the way down. <laughs> all right, so now comes the hard part, guys. The hard part is the brushing. Uh, you have to know when to stop and when to brush more and it's gonna take practice like at first you're going to want to brush a lot but you're going to have to not brush a lot um, if I end up doing one that I like I'll often like put it around so I can kind of look at it to like figure out is I want something like that, so I need to kind of have a template for what I want it to look like. So what's going to happen, you're going to get your brush. Now I have a few brushes. I have this one, I have this one, and this one, and then another one which has plastic um, bristles. And usually for yarn wig making I like to use this one, it's the nicest brush and it pulls the the fibers out really well and it's really good for just brushing in general and stuff but it's good for shorter shorter wefts but for the long ones it's too good it's too good at pulling apart the fibers and separating them which is not what we're trying to do here we're trying to keep each of these separate fiber each of these strands relatively together. So you're, this one right here, you're not going to want to detangle it or um, like separate the, the strands that are actually making it up. You want to keep these all together and uniform. What we're going to do is we're basically going to be teasing this and fluffing it up. So whenever you brush it, you don't do long, long sweeps like that. You do short little, short little ones and just kind of tease it and fluff it. Now the top here is one of the most important parts not to mess up. You don't want to mess up the top because it's where it's holding all the rest of it and if you mess up the top then the rest is just gone. doesn't matter. And when you already put this in a strand, a weft, so we want to try and keep it that way. So trying to fluff it up. Flip it over. I'll often work one side and then I'll flip it over and work the other side just constantly as I work. The top also honestly doesn't really matter that much because it's going to be covered up by more strands and more wefts. You shouldn't really be able to see this part of the wig or the, the hair. Though it also just kind of depends on what kind of wig you're making, what the style's going to be like. So if you look at this, it's starting to unravel up here, which is not that great. It unravels the most at the top too, so you'll want to be careful. I'm just going to go ahead and move on and not really brush the top any more than I have. I'm going to hold it firmly 
and I'm just going to move down. I'm just going to hold it firmly and move on, fluffing up as I go down. Still holding it firmly. The reason I want to hold it up here so firmly is because I don't want any of this to untangle or to be like for the fibers to slip down. I just want this stuff to be worked on. I don't want anything to happen to the stuff up there. So literally we're just working our way down slowly, like moving our grasp downward as we fluff things up. So the reason this works and not the shorter uh, method is because we're literally just fluffing up these fibers and slightly tearing them like out. We aren't um, tearing them completely out and with the other method, the thing is about yarn that these little, these little fibers that make up the strands of yarn, they don't actually, they aren't that long. They don't usually stretch more than like four or five inches. So if you get that far, it's just going to be pulled out and it won't matter. So that's why whenever you do the longer method, you get so much of this. You get so much leftover pulled out stuff. With the long method, you don't get nearly as much. Yeah, just got that back in there. You don't get nearly as much because you're trying not to pull out these fibers all the way. And another thing that's way different about this method is that we're working from the top where the knots are down the length of the thing to the bottom. With the shorter method, you work from the bottom up to the knots. So the reason we're doing top down is because the fibers won't, if we do it from the bottom to the top, the fibers will shred a lot differently. Like it won't work nearly as well if, as if you do it from the top to the bottom. It's hard to explain. But the science is there. I promise. But yeah, feel free to experiment with this. If something doesn't work, then something doesn't work. If something does work, then <laughs> tell me. Share your secrets. So I'm just going to keep working and steadily keep fluffing this up as I go down. So I'll see you when that happens. Alright, so here you can see we're getting close to the end. Still going to be trying to fluff it towards the end. actually do is I'm gonna cut them all semi-equally just to make this easier on myself. Make 
sure this is fluffy. Now I'm not making sure the very tips are that fluffy because we're going to be worrying about the tips in a different way. Just up to like a couple inches from the tips needs to be decently floofed. Alright. Alright, so now we have this. We're still going to be holding it tightly because we don't want any of this to be pulled out. But I'll probably do one to two inches, probably just like a couple inches at most. And I'm going to use this good brush now and just do kind of like how I do my uh, shorter strands. Just working from the bottom and working up and unraveling all that. And that's the end, right there. So now we have this fluffy, this fluffy mess. <laughs> so now I'm really, I'm just gonna, just gonna pull it. And I'll do this carefully, try not to actually get any of the strands out. I'm just doing this to make it more or less unruly now. And you can still, after you've done the unraveling part at the end, you can still go back and brush up and down the whole thing, but you just have to be careful, because if you do it too much, then all your hard work will be for nothing. Just gotta be mindful of the strands, because if you brush them too much, even if it's down here and the top's up here, it can still unravel in the middle. It can also unravel at the very bottom. Just gotta watch and not go too crazy. It'd be nice if you could go crazy and just brush everything out like the max amount of floof brush as possible, but it's really hard. You just have to practice, I guess, and even then it won't be perfect whenever you finish. But that's how you do a, a long thing and then lightly, lightly straightening with a straightener on low setting. Honestly, you don't even have to straighten this part. It's just, if you want to, you can. I still do recommend straightening the bottom um, because it just looks better that way. The bottom does look better straightened. Um, but yeah, that's how you do a long, a long turn weft. And you can still see, they still are separate pieces. Like this is still the strand that it was, still the strand that it was further down. It's still a strand. They're just fluffy, so it's harder to tell them apart. And yeah, that's, that's how it works. So like that kind of doesn't even look like they're separate pieces. Still is. And you can still sometimes see a little bit of the yarn. But if you are work slow at it, and you're patient, and you don't rip it apart, then you can get some really nice looking wefts. Um, and again, it won't look the same as a shorter thing. It just won't. It's not going to look like a short yarn wig. But you can get a wig that's long, made out of yarn, and have it look decent. It just won't look the same as a short um, wig. If you want you can layer these really well. Like if you figure out the exact lengths and you layer them perfectly, it can end up looking really nice like how a shorter yarn wig looks. And you can combine both the methods in one wig. You can use shorter hair for the top part and then for the longer parts and in the back you can use longer hair. It's honestly like that's what I suggest doing. If you're going to go after a long wig then for the bangs and stuff you use short yarn and then for the rest of it 
long yarn. But for the top of the head and the bangs, short yarn's the way to go. And that also just depends on what kind of style wig you're going for. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Happy wig making, guys.